1979, there was a Democratic mayoral primary election taking place between Jane Byrne and Michael Blandick. He was the incumbent, and it was clear to most that he was going to win. Right before the election, there was a major snowfall in Chicago that Mayor Michael Blandick did not seem prepared for. His poor response cost him the mayoral election against Jane Byrne that year. The failure of the snow plan led to greatly improved snow removal efforts in the future, and Byrne's victory showed that there could be a successful reform candidate. It also was a step toward neighborhood improvements and the later election of Mayor Harold Washington. Michael Bolandic was an alderman for seven years before becoming the interim mayor of Chicago when Richard J. Daley died without finishing his term. He was appointed by the century-old Chicago Democratic political machine, which is noted as being one of the most powerful political machines in history. An African-American candidate for interim mayor, Wilson Frost, was being considered, but the machine decided that Chicago wasn't ready for an African-American mayor. During his term, Bolandic worked on labor contract agreements with multiple fields. He ended the 15-year dispute over the Crosstown Expressway, set up mortgage loans for middle-class families, and started the first Chicago Fest. During his term, he also fired Jane Byrne from her position as city commissioner after a lengthy battle with her. After being fired, Byrne decided to run for mayor to get back at Michael Bolandic and the Chicago machine. There's always been that fear of fighting City Hall built in. I mean, I, I don't care if you're from a small town, you always hear, don't fight City Hall. And I don't think that even I would ever have thought fight City Hall. Byrne might have had some public support, but no one thought there was any way that she could win. Labor, big business, both the major newspapers, all had endorsed Bolandic. Political observers would uh, have said at that time that he was a, an odds-on favorite, that uh, there was no way that Jane Byrne could win the election. Everybody thought uh, that because he was supported by the uh, machine, if you will, the regular Democratic Party, that he had an inside track. He was uh, a total long shot. It was almost miraculous that she won. Not only did Bolandic's backup suggest that he was going to win, but Byrne was really coming into the election as the underdog. She had practically no money compared to Michael Bolandic's massive funding. Toward the end of his term, Bolandic was faced with a great challenge. A huge blizzard dumped more than 20 inches of snow on the city. Two major issues were CTA travel and street cleaning. The CTA was completely dysfunctional, trains and buses couldn't move through the snow, and L cars were dealing with overcrowding and frozen tracks. How many do you think they're here on the corner Right now about 75. Transportation, you have to wait for buses, and they come three or four in a row, uh -huh. and it has just been awful. And the man in the office had to come out here and stand and wait, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he'd know what it's all about. Trains had bypassed stations in the city's black neighborhoods, leaving thousands of people out in the cold, says Dick Stone's Sun-Times reporter. Chicago citizen Barbara Curie says that the CTA had blatant and institutional racism. Street cleaning could not take place, garbage could not be picked up, and cars, trucks, and other vehicles could not move through the streets. Many people were saying that snow removal efforts were worse than in past years. Streets were impassable and the conditions were utterly unlivable. I remember walking down the middle of Michigan Avenue. We would go to stories um, on snowmobiles. There would be cross-country skiing in the middle of Michigan Avenue and the loop. I remember walking down uh, um, one street and seeing something uh, in front of me on what seemed to be the uh, surface and it turned out to be the top of a fire hydrant. Week after week after week there was no melting of the snow. It was just piled up. The streets were uncrossable. Senior citizens were prisoners in their apartments because they could not get out. They, they wouldn't have made it through the snow. It was so bad, I lived on the 43rd floor, and I could look out and see, you know, the different trucks and things that were being assembled to handle it. And you'd see a truck sitting there for two, three hours because the snowblower couldn't get them. The utter lack of accessible transportation put the city at a standstill both socially and economically. People needed security in public transport and accessible streets. While Bolandic was focused on the blizzard and not his campaign, 
Byrne bombarded the media with advertisements attacking removal efforts. No one could stop the snow, but good planning could prevent the collapse of public transportation and clean the city up fast. People were angry enough about snow removal efforts, and these commercials only heightened their anger. This was seen a lot in communities that were primarily African American, where people had CTA service cut off. Jane Byrne also advocated herself to these communities, claiming that she would bring a voice to unrecognized neighborhoods. I want a new mayor. I want a new mayor. Belandic, we need a new mayor. He ain't no good. The frustrations that uh, people uh, developed out in the neighborhoods uh, found their release on election day. Before the snowstorm, she didn't have much of a chance. Um, the snowstorm made the, the campaign and made the election. People came to voting booths in mass numbers to put in their vote for Byrne. 76% of votes were in her favor. Jane Byrne had won the election. She had defeated the Chicago machine. Across the country, people were talking about her miraculous win. This is Thank the you. greatest political victory that anyone of in this part of the country time. has ever heard of. It was practically unanimously agreed that the main reason that Byrne won was because of the blizzard and the city's response. It shined a light on how poorly the Chicago machine handled big issues and the people really hadn't seen it before. Many would say that if the blizzard hadn't occurred, nor would Byrne's victory. Jane Byrne's election had a powerful effect on Chicago. During her term, Byrne made many city improvements, including drawing attention to the horrifying conditions in city housing project Cabrini Green and preventing police from raiding gay bars. But the biggest impact of the election was that it exposed, for the first time, weakness in the Chicago machine. Racist machine leaders had previously prevented African Americans from taking office. Byrne's candidacy gave confidence to black voters, and they voted for her in mass numbers. During her term, however, Byrne betrayed their trust by getting involved in machine dealings, and black voters turned out in immense numbers against her to vote for Harold Washington in the 1983 mayoral election. Washington was the first African American mayor of Chicago, and became an international figure representing both Chicago and minorities. But we shouldn't forget how historic it was that Byrne was the first female mayor of the city. Back then, for a woman to become mayor of one of the biggest cities in America, this was a big deal. It was not quite as big, but in those days as big as the first African American president of the United States. Not only did burn winning have a significant impact on the city, but the snowstorm itself really changed snow removal efforts for every blizzard after. Not since the 1979 snowstorm have we seen such disorganized snow plans and such an out-of-touch mayor. Chicago Magazine says that elected officials and public planners tell each other, plow the streets or you'll end up just like Mayor Belandic. This has been seen across the country. It's an incredible impact. Uh, it has affected every election since. And one of the reasons is that it's kind of an old joke, but um, it, it, there's a reality. The minute there is a hint of a snow, all the streets and sanitation workers and trucks will be called in, and they'll be putting salt down before a flake of snow ever hits. That can be directly traced to the Belandic and Bird election. Because, you know, the they believe that you know you could lose an election because of a snowfall. Byrne also implemented a new snow removal plan. She purchased $40 million worth of snow plows and created a law saying that no one can park on some streets when there are two inches of snowfall or over. This can be directly traced to the cars that would be left parked in the middle of the streets, causing mass congestion during the 1979 snowfalls. We no longer see this issue in the city. I mean, we knew what it was like to have this disaster and we weren't going to have it happen again. If the blizzard hadn't occurred, a series of impacts would not have followed. From these events, the impregnable, century-old Chicago political machine was defeated. Chicago got a woman, an African-American mayor. A very dangerous housing project was destroyed. There are many more money-making tourist attractions in Chicago, and snow planning is now organized and well-funded. We can look back at these events and see how one snowstorm can completely turn around the outcome of an election and the future of a city.